So I've recently moved house and that's the reason why I haven't made a video for a while and for those subscribers of mine that are from the UK you might not be familiar but uh, in the UK if you watch broadcast television you need a thing called a TV license and that goes to the BBC and I think it's around 142, 143 pounds a year and you need it for all broadcast channels even though we get other channels ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5 um, even if you watch those you still need to have a TV license even though those channels don't get any money now I personally don't watch television I don't sit there, I don't have it on um, I'm normally reading I do watch some programs but normally they're all streamed from YouTube or other sources on the internet I subscribe to Netflix and watch films but uh, I don't sit there and watch broadcast television I find it really really boring but unfortunately the BBC will not believe that uh, a person in this day and age uh, will not sit there and watch television they uh, just assume that uh, you're lying so what I've done I've come up with uh, this idea to actually uh, padlock my TVs so nobody can actually connect an aerial to it now of course it's not um, a foolproof thing because you can connect a digital box to the actual SCART socket but um, a television nowadays is a multiple a multi-tool it's uh, capable of a lot more things than just watching broadcast t television and some of the YouTube videos I've seen where the TV license man has knocked on the door one of the first things it says is that uh, you need a TV license do you own a TV and really the question should be not do you own a TV do you watch live broadcast channels so uh, I don't so what I've come up with is this idea of padlocking the actual antenna connection to the TV and this idea came to me is because back in uh, the early 1980s when I lived at home and I was a lot younger uh, the telephone calls that uh, they used to make back then were really really expensive and my mum and dad to stop um, me and my sister making phone calls and running up a, a bill um, purchased a uh, telephone lock and used to go on the old dial uh, telephone and used to go on the number one so it made it uh, impossible to actually dial a number using the rotary dial although there were other ways around that of course so uh, this is where this idea has come from so I'm going to show you what I did and uh, how to make one of these and also there's some instructions that you can download in the description if you uh, want to make yourself one of these so if they do come knocking on your door you can show them I've got one of these anti-TV locks, anti-TV license locks should I say, connected to my television so it's impossible for me to connect a aerial to my television. So I've made a PDF plan of uh, how I constructed this TV lock and uh, the actual drawings are not to scale but the measurements are and what you're going to need is to get hold of uh, some of these hose lock uh, type jubilee clip brackets and uh, you want one that's 8 to 10 millimeters. I picked uh, a pack of 10 of these up off eBay for £2.50 so they're really really cheap and what you want to do first is actually deconstruct this and remove the bolt and remove the actual nut at the end there as well. So this nut is just held in place by some folded down metal on top of that so the easiest way to get that off is just prise it up with some wire cutters prise them tabs up and then it release so now you want to get yourself a piece of metal to actually make this part first and what I've got here is some metal that I got off eBay I got it in A4 sheets and it's one millimeter thick it's a, a galvanized metal and what I've done is I've covered it in some masking tape just so I can actually mark off the different measurements and uh, I've also gone ahead and drilled the first hole in the end here which is this one here, it's the bigger of the holes, it's actually five millimeters and I haven't uh, measured this length yet, I've just made sure I've got plenty to work with and the reason why this hole wants to be slightly bigger is because if you have a look at the nut on here it's got like a little flange that sticks up and what I've done is made the hole big enough so that will actually fit into place in there nice and flush 
So with that in place, what I'm going to do now is hold it with some pliers and then I'm going to bend this back on itself like so. Just like that and then back over again. So you completely sandwich that nut inside the metal. So what that means now is I can drill the pilot hole for my next hole which is three millimeters using uh, this nut as a guide so I can drill straight down through the other side so I know it will all match up. So I've carefully drilled a small pilot hole through there using that as a guide like I said and now what I can do is just remove this nut and then use a bigger three millimeter drill bit. Uh, the reason that I remove the nut is because I don't want to damage the actual threads in that nut because we actually need those. So what I've done, I've attached it back to the clip here so we can actually bend it back over on itself. And the reason why I've sandwiched the nut in place in between there is because this one was one of the first prototypes I made and I realized that even if there's a padlock on this side, somebody could still get a pair of pliers and unscrew this nut because uh, there's nothing protecting it. But uh, this way, um, it'd be really difficult to unscrew that nut with the padlock in place. So what we're going to do now is bend it back on for itself, just like this, right angle bend going that way. And to make sure it's really neat, I'm using some needle nose pliers just to put that bend in there. So we've got a right angle bend on there now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off some of the excess. So uh, we can also then use uh, this piece to actually make this part, which goes down like so, and then the padlock goes in between them and you can't get a screwdriver in to unscrew it. So the other part of the mechanism is a piece of metal that's 20 millimeters long and two three millimeter holes at the ends there and what we're going to do is just put a right angle bend directly in the middle of this. So we've got the bottom part in place and what I've done I've just uh, ground the edges off a little bit so they're not sharp just rounded them off and what I'm going to do now is again I'm going to drill down through this hole using it as a pilot hole to drill the hole in this top part here and then cut away any excess and again just round off any sharp edges from there. So we've got that part finished now and finally we want a sliver of really thin tin and I got this from the lid of a baked bean tin and just be really careful just uh, when you cut this actually get a bit of emery paper and just blunt the size a little bit because it can be sharp and this piece is roughly 43 millimeters in length and what it's going to do is bend over the top of there and then bend back under so I start this side first putting it underneath this nut and then what I'm going to do is bend it down into there like a little hook like so and then if you get a pen and bend it like that and then bring it across the top and down and back under there So we've got it looking like that. So then when that is on the actual input for the aerial, then the sides are going to be squashed up against that. So you can't remove this. And with the padlock in place, you can't undo the nut. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please uh, give it a big thumbs up. It really does help. And uh, if you find uh, things like this interesting, I do lots of videos like this. So. You can always subscribe and I'll uh, catch you on the next one.